Welcome back. You're still tuned into our city. This evening, we are focusing on the issue of teenage pregnancy in South Africa. Our city journalist, Sinolwazi April, recently sat down with Liesl Hermanas from the Perennial Mental Health Project to talk about some of the reasons why teenagers fall pregnant, why some choose to keep the baby, and how the pregnancy affects the mental wellness of young girls. This is part one of that interview. Good evening and welcome to our city. This evening we are talking about teenage pregnancy and in studio we have Liesl Hermanis, who is a counsellor for the Perinatal Mental Health Project in Hanover Park. Good evening Liesl, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Could you please tell us more about Perinatal Mental um, Health Project and what it does? Okay, so the Perinatal Mental Health Project, we have acknowledged that there is a public need for um, mental health care within the private setting and so what we really are trying to do is we are advocating for accessible mental health care services and mental health care support for all mothers and we also have four programs that we are currently running and that would be um, our research program and then we have a clinical services program where we have um, three counselling sites. We have one in Anova Park, we have a counselling site at Mowbray Maternity Hospital and then we have a um, clinical services site at Falls Bay Hospital as well and then we also have a training program, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, and then also um, an advocacy program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you specifically, what mm -hmm. do you do? So I am a mental health counsellor and I'm based at Anova Park Midwife Obstetric Unit which is in Athlone and we serve the greater Athlone area and then we have a lot of patients coming from Philippi as well. Okay. Yeah. With your time being a counsellor, what have you seen um, are some of the reasons that teenagers are falling pregnant and keeping the baby? Mm -hmm. You see, it's quite, um, it's quite complex um, and I think each teenager and every teenager and their story is quite different. So um, I would say there are a number of reasons. I would say that, you know, teenagers, maybe there's not enough access to services for contraception. Um, it could be that a teenager herself maybe hasn't grown up with the love and the care and the nurturing of her own mother or, you know, a really good support system. And so because of that she is quite vulnerable and we do know that adolescents and teenagers um, are more at risk of you know certain behaviors such as risky sexual behaviors or alcohol drugs and we all know that with alcohol and with drugs um, that the possibility of becoming pregnant is there. Um, in terms of why they keep the babies um, Believe it or not, teenage moms can actually make good mothers, um, especially when there is a good support system, when their parents are involved, um, when they have grandparents, and um, they, they're quite resilient. And despite it being really difficult and very hard, they tend to push through and want to do it and want to be a mother to, to their baby. Mm. And how does it affect them academically at school? And yeah. how does it affect the family? Mm. Um, so having a baby is obviously a major life event, whether it has been planned or not. And I think it's even, it can be really overwhelming for a teenager because they are already dealing with the normal issues of being an adolescent, you know, and the physical changes and all the emotional and psychological changes that they are also experiencing and so if you take you know that and then you sort of add being pregnant I mean it can be very overwhelming and so teenagers are a very vulnerable group and they are more at risk of becoming pregnant I mean they are more at risk of becoming depressed or anxious either during the pregnancy and also after birth um, 
besides that, there could be other stresses, including, you know, a lack of support, whether it's from the family or whether it's, you know, from the partner, because we do normally find that, you know, pregnancy can have a negative impact on relationships, especially when it has been unplanned, and this can often result in separation of the pregnant teenager and the partner, and that can also be very stressful. Um, there could be schooling issues, um, there could be financial problems where she doesn't, she doesn't really know how she's going to look after this baby financially because mommy and daddy are already unemployed and the only income really is the social grant. Um, there could be other stresses. It could be that maybe on the day of coming to book she was diagnosed HIV positive or she was informed that she you know, has a sexually transmitted infection. So there are really a lot of factors that put teenagers at risk of becoming depressed or experiencing um, mental health distress during the pregnancy and then postnatally as well. And then you, you also ask the question of how does this impact on the family. So um, parental reactions to the news of your teenager telling you that she's pregnant normally include feelings of anger, disappointment, despair and I think also in many cases parents also blame themselves or they see their daughter becoming pregnant as a reflection of their parenting skills or their parenting um, and so I think it's quite normal that parents have this reaction towards the news of the pregnancy um, but normally they do get to a point where they accept the pregnancy and where these feelings of being angry or being sad or maybe replaced with feelings of excitement or starting to prepare for the arrival of the of the baby According to a 2016 survey by the National Department of Health in partnership with the South African Medical Research Council, children born to very young mothers are at increased risk of sickness and death. Teenage mothers are more likely to experience adverse pregnancy outcomes and are more constrained in the ability to pursue educational opportunities than young women who are delay, who delay childbearing. In this following interview, Ms. Hermanas addresses how lack of support from family and friends can lead to depression and provide pregnant teens and teen moms with advice. Let's watch. It's, it's quite normal that when a teenager has become um, pregnant and maybe, you know, there have been a lack of there has been a lack of support from family or from friends. I mean, it, it it's to be understood that they would feel sad or they would feel very worried or scared or afraid, you know. But with depression, we sort of need to look at how long this is going on for. And so, with depression, their mood is normally affected. So, you know, like this persistent low mood which normally carries on for two weeks or more than that. You know, the appetite is normally affected. So they, you know, they don't have an appetite or maybe they are eating, find that they're eating too much. Also, um, problem sleeping. So either difficulty falling asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, very low energy levels. So where they just don't feel like they have the energy to do anything like they you know it's just so difficult getting up in the morning and sort of you know like going to work or going for your antenatal appointment you know like if you're feeling depressed it's sort of very difficult to plan your day and to think about okay this is what I need to do so you know your sort of your decision making it's it's not the same compared to somebody who maybe who's not depressed, mm -hmm. yeah. And then also, you know, maybe thoughts of suicide, where they, I mean, sometimes when you're really feeling very overwhelmed um, and you're feeling depressed, you know, it's not uncommon for 
teenagers to feel like the only way to deal with this or the only way out of this is to end it. You know, um, so they do normally have thoughts of suicide, they are feelings of hopelessness, um, feelings of guilt, yeah. And then also relationships are also affected, so they have quite difficulty socialising, so they tend to withdraw from family, they tend to withdraw from friends, yeah. So how can people um, get a hold of you? Okay, so... Um, we do have a website and it's www.pmhp.za.org or .org.za. Um, and then also, we, as I mentioned to you earlier, we do have three server sites um, at Mowbray, at um, False Bay and then at Anova Park. But I think the best thing to do would be to go maybe to speak to one of the, the clinic staff, you know, if you are feeling depressed or you know, go and find out from them, is there a counsellor that I can speak to, um, or any adult for that matter that you, you know, you trust. Because, you know, sometimes when you are feeling depressed, it's kind of difficult to think about your options or your choices, or it's difficult to think, you know, about resources that are available to you. So even if you can just sort of go to somebody and say, this is how I'm feeling, you know, that person also may be able to direct you to, to resources and and normally when you know normally when you ask patients about like their mood and functioning like when they do say no but they have been feeling very down or depressed you know and you try to engage with them they'll normally say no but this is part of the pregnancy you know it's all part of the mood swings but you know if it's sort of impacting on social relationships you know if you staying out of work because you couldn't get out of bed um, you know, then it's, then it's just, then it's more than just the pregnancy, you know, then, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back. You're still watching Our City. In the following interview, we sat down with MACO member J.P. Smith to tell us about the programs that the city of Cape Town has in place for pregnant teens and the teenage moms. Let's have a look. The stats show an improvement in that. We're down from 2,800 young women pregnant uh, during the year before last to 2,400 in last year. So there's, a, there's an improvement but it is still too high. Mm -hmm. It might be that some people choose to become pregnant quite young, but I think just as often those pregnancies are unplanned. And the problem with unplanned pregnancies is that you are rarely going to have the resources and means to give the child all the opportunities and breaks he or she needs. Mm -hmm. In most of the cases, the families become involved and end up raising the child collectively. Sometimes there are parents or grandparents who become responsible for raising the child. But I think in terms of emotional maturity and where they're at it in life, young men and women in school or straight after school do not have the ability to raise a child effectively. They don't have the emotional maturity, nor do they have the time in that they're supposed to be engaged in, in cementing their own future without which it is going to be hard to supply resources for a, for a, for a kid. So the, the city does what it can to reduce teenage pregnancy and we've got a series of programs that impact on that. Mm -hmm. the, there is a lot of hormones and public messaging and the influence of alcohol and other such things that work against that message. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that happen at taverns, shabines, nightclubs, parties, in relationships, a lot of messaging around movies, the, the extent to which sex um, appears prominently in every aspect of our life. You're made to think that if you're not sexually active, you're not cool or you're not relevant. Um, and it is a pity that some of these uh, societal and sometimes cultural factors uh, make it so difficult for young people to escape that trap. Because I think especially for young women, it is a debilitating consequence. Mm -hmm. 
they are the ones who have to then spend the next 20 years of their life raising the kid instead of being able to get enough of a foot in the door in their career market or otherwise to look after themselves. When they get older, they're too old to meaningfully start a career again. Not always, but mostly. And that usually doesn't apply to the man. The man is able to go about his business, he lives his life. And again, that's not true of all men, but it's true of most men. So they are going to sit with a situation where where the, the, the woman will give up a lot of her personal economic and financial security in favor or in, in order to look after the child. And in terms of keeping the child, I think that's a, that's a cultural issue. Mm -hmm. There are religious and cultural values that dictate how people will behave under those circumstances that are not always the same thing as the, what uh, the woman might otherwise choose as her best interest. Uh, and the city gives people the options to make those decisions for themselves. So we can't compel a person to side one way or another, nor should we want to. But what we can do is give them the information and the opportunities to make those choices. So we do quite a number of things to make people, to make young people alert around the issue of pregnancy, teenage pregnancy, antenatal care, uh, and, and the options they have. So we do health promotions in schools. There are constant talks given to young people in school.